This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right, you ready, brother? What, 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 are you just going to be hanging here? I can chill over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Pete, we should get this on. We should... Is this on? Are we on? I'm, 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 I'm recording. I'm recording. Okay, so, yeah. All right, so... Let me make sure I'm recording. Now you're freaking me out. This guy will fly back here and kill me if I'm not recording. Holy shit. All right. I'm recording. Shit is intense. <laughs> Where is he, bro? Right off camera? Uh, he's, he's, he's off to the side, but yeah, I mean, when, when we get in the real studio, you're not going to be as prevalent, but like just if you want to like get emails done or or work, yeah, just... Oh, yeah, yeah, over there, over there is good. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 yeah, bro. I'm, wait, ju wait. I'm just telling you what. what? <laughs> you are so funny. I mean, here we got all the equipment. It's great, but at the end of the day, once we start rolling, even though thousands of people hear this and see this, when you're doing it, you're just like me. Everybody, I, I get out of here. This is private. <laughs> but my question is, what? Aren't we supposed to use Patrick? Like, I got notes here. We got to get into Brad Pitt wearing a skirt. You know, so like. Don't we tell yeah. Patrick and then boom, he shows us that? He, he's here. He could just put it up, right? Like you could hear him. You're getting the behind the scenes, folks. He's he's going to sit there. He's got his mouth <laughs> open right now. He looks like he's lost. He, he, don't, even, he don't even know what we're yeah, talking about. Well, I mean, <laughs> bro, I do. I hear everything. But with this Zoom, I, I, it's like I'm trying to get used to it. I'm just waiting for you to buy me a house, bro, when I just come out there with the family. I bet, bro, what the, I said with all this shit, we could have bought you a nice little condo, and, and and you come over and you do it in person. <laughs> oh man! Oh, oh fuck! Oh boy! So all right, so listen, uh, uh, that you know, I don't know. Uh, welcome to the Pete and Sebastian show. Uh, typically, uh, we don't. The clap is gone. Clap is right? gone. But yes. Don't have to do that. And uh, if you haven't noticed already, people, if you're if you're watching this, this is a semi new setup. Uh, Pete and I have now. Pete, for the listeners and the viewers, could you explain where you are in the home? Yes, totally new setup. I am upstairs in the right hand corner of my house there's a little nook that's perfect uh, patrick was saying it's it's not much smaller than the size you're going to be using for your studio and i built i don't know if you can see this this slide door i got going here yeah, check yeah. this out i built that man it's a giant piece of foam that you get from walmart and i bought some paneling and i glued it on so it looks like you know you bought and then i hung it right there but then my my router is literally as far away from me as you could possibly be. So I I don't know when you want to get into it, but it's a whole story about Patrick coming out here and what we had to go through. <laughs> well, let me let me rewind here, um, guys. Again, it's not only it, it's just this is the true meaning of a lifestyle show, <laughs> bro. We're getting in the DIY or DIY. Is it it DIY? Do it yourself. <laughs> Do it, yeah, D Y I. Oh yeah, heavy. Uh, yeah, I, I could walk. Yeah, in. yeah. I mean, foam board plant paneling. You got a door. I thought that was cedar. That, that's thank you, bro. It's, it's unbelievable. It's a side talent I have. My grandfather, God rest his soul, he used to make furniture in a factory right outside of Yankee Stadium. It's in my blood. It's an Italian thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's, fant <laughs> it's fantastic. And before we go any further, I, I also <laughs> got to let everybody know, we have a new producer, Patrick, and he's in the room with me, which is fucking awkward, bro. I'm telling you. Oh, I, I've been doing this thing now for eight years solo, and now uh, Patrick's in the corner of the room uh, acting yeah. like he's not here. So I, I got Patrick <laughs> off to my right. Uh, it's the he, it's the difference between driving your own car and driving an Uber. That right? It's like it's like you got a guy in the back seat that you pretend it isn't dad. 
<laughs> yeah, you won't say things in an Uber that you'd say in your car alone, right? So I don't know. Oh. Whole... <laughs> How many times have you ever been in an Uber and the, and the guy's wife calls? And he and you can tell he's telling her, "Let me get this slug out of the back, and I'll call and I'll call you right back." <laughs> Not saying Patrick is. I'm saying you know when you got a passenger, he's been yeah, fantastic. No, he the guy's been fantastic. Uh, anybody that goes out to Fredonia, New York, to set this thing up has to have commitment and work ethic. And then I don't know what happened over there. It was like a. He, he went to Fredonia, and three hours later, he was in Cleveland. <laughs> I, I told, yeah, it was um. Well, and I didn't appreciate the dig, by the way, when you texted and said, wow, you got to go all the way to Cleveland to get a camera. It's like, you know Guy. what? You know what else? Yeah. You know what else? You got to go all the way to Cleveland to get sighting of a homeless person. Thank you. So take Listen. the good with the bad. <laughs> Listen, this is goes out to everybody. <laughs> no, no. I, I hear you. Patrick laughed. Listen. <laughs> Well, considering what he's been working on, guy, he's going to be laughing a lot. <laughs> I told him I was going to be doing that. That's just what I do. If you work on another uh, show, I make fun of it. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's awesome. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm sitting there telling Lana, I go, uh, I'm sorry, but before I buy a home anywhere, yeah. I would ask the real estate agent, listen, if I want to take pictures and buy a camera, is there a camera place around here? And if she said, Phew, you're going to have to go about two and a half hours to Cleveland, I'd say, goodbye. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, the next question, can you buy a car where you live? You can buy a car where I live, but, uh, you know, it gets, it, it, it's not, they know, they try to take advantage of it. You got to go to Buffalo. You got, you got, you got to go to <laughs> Buffalo for anything for, of significance, which is about 50 miles away. Buffalo has many cameras. Patrick just milk? needed a very, <laughs> milk. Oh, yeah, hey, listen, you, you can get milk in my backyard if you squeeze the right nipple. <laughs> That's one thing we got a lot of uh, milk and deer. Uh, but uh, so he just needed a specific camera. But for the listeners, this gentleman, Patrick, who's working with us, took a red eye from Los Angeles, landed in the morning in f a Buffalo, rented a car, drove the hour to Fredonia. And then in the middle of the day, the camera wasn't working, needed to get a new camera that was exactly the same camera. Only place that had it remotely close was Cleveland, two and a half hours away. He drove to Cleveland, came back from Cleveland, like, like it was just a 20 minute jaunt to Radio Shack. And then, uh, and then he continued working till midnight. And then he drove back to Buffalo and caught a 9 a.m. flight home, so. Go ahead, Jack. What'd she say? She, 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 she's, you know, God bless her. She's trying to be nice when he was uh, on his way to Buffalo. She goes, well, first of all, I gave him a couple of homemade slices of pizza that Jackie made from the night before because he just wanted to get in the car and go. I go, let me heat up some pizza for you. So he drives all the way to Buffalo. And right before he leaves, Jackie goes, if you're too tired when you get back to go home to, uh, and he goes to Cleveland. And she goes, and I gave him the pizza to go to Cleveland. I'm sorry. She goes, when you get back from Cleveland, if you're too tired to go home to Buffalo, we can open up the sofa bed downstairs for you, no problem. And he kind of gave me a look like, I'll tell you, Patrick kind of gave me a look like, is she serious? Like, I don't even know you people. That, that, that's, that, that's how nice Jackie is, you know? <laughs> and in my head, I was like, are you serious with doing that? I got to get my... <laughs> I gotta get the shit Yeti out of the basement if he's sleeping over. Put that thing on my fucking lap. I don't know this guy, <laughs> right? Uh, so then, so then this guy drives. This guy does a round trip five hours after a red eye, and now he's coming up here to set up the camera, right? And Jackie goes to me, "I can't believe I heard what you said when he came up." And I go, "What?" Because I go, "He, bro, he wasn't saying anything about the pizza." Right, so I I go, how's the pizza, man? And she goes, he fucking drives five hours. He's working his ass off, and you ask him about two slices that you gave him for the road. I go, the sauce alone deserved the comment. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Patrick oh, was shit. a warrior, man. A warrior. Well, good, man. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we're up and running, kind of semi on the new on the new setup. I, I just basically turned one of the chairs around, so you're looking at the the movie screen in the back. So that's the only difference here. But the the apparatus I got in front of me, bro, it, it's like working at NORAD. I mean, we got <laughs> wires. We we got a lot of stuff going on here, and uh, but it's good. It's good. I know my sound quality has sucked the last three weeks just because things were breaking, but I think we're headed towards. What's all we want to do is put out a nice quality show. It doesn't have to be a lot of frills. We just want uh, you guys to hear us and see us, and uh, I think we're headed in that direction. So we're happy to have Patrick on. Uh, sorry to say uh, goodbye to. Uh, to DJ Lou and uh, DJ Hank, which uh, never got to meet DJ Hank, but um, yeah, I, I'm sh I, I think we're all right with that. Yeah, well, I, I love Lou, and I, I hope to do something and figure out something with him. But um, I, this is it's turning into a television show. DJ Lou has been unbelievable over the last nine years of this cast, right? Mm -hmm. uh, more so in the beginning because he was able to, you know be dj lou but exactly. uh yeah couldn't have done all this with uh without dj lou and it's not like uh, we're casting them off to the side there'll be other projects down the road it's just like this particular project requires someone to be here and lou can't be either where you are or where i'm at so uh um, yeah DJ, dj lou is a big part of the show here and will be yeah. will be missed uh next uh next we got to get rid of the, the jimmy from boston <laughs> Oh, no. boy. <laughs> Either that or Patrick's got to fly out to Boston and set one of these things up just for the phone call. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, another one. I mean, the show is morphing, and uh, I definitely got to have a talk with those guys anyway. But it is what it is. I love them both. But this is, like I said, I mean, I watch a lot of Netflix and Amazon and everything in between, and this is better. So it's a, <laughs> it's a TV show. I hope I don't lose you. We ended up doing this thing where you like set up these towers all in your house so the signal hits one and it hits the other and it hits the other and works its way all the way up here but stays the same strength bro i could literally go work for a fucking it company at this point i i'm I, bro whatever is going on over there i'm having no problems no issues no skips we're good right do you go by patrick or could i go pat pat or no no pat Either one. okay all right hey man just learning yeah. Learning the, the, the ins and outs of our new coworker. Um, I like to find out what they go by. Like if, if you go, you go by Patrick or Pat, oh, Pat, if he goes, Pat, I go Patrick. You know what I'm oh, saying? Like I, I go oh, different yeah. than everybody else. So I get known to him, like my cousin, God rest his soul. He used to call me Peter. Nobody called me Peter. So it was like his thing, you know? So I tried to you call you Seb, but you shut that down. Holy shit, did you know, shut I, that down? Yeah, shut that, bad. shut that right you down. Do that. You can't even put Seb in a text to you. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, Peter, did you hold in higher, higher, or sorry, the guy that called you Peter, did you hold him in higher regard to everybody else because he was calling you something other than Pete? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I did for a few other reasons too, but yes, I did hold him in right, higher regard because I felt by him putting the R on the end of my full name, he was holding me in higher regard. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah no. Peter's a lot, I like lot that. more distinguished. I like how you make people use your full name. And you know what? That's, that's, a, that's another life lesson you get from the cast. Your father gave you or your mother gave you that full name for a reason. Don't butcher it. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't go out with half an outfit. Don't go out with half a name, guy. Yeah, no, bro, you got a point. And, and and speaking with Patrick, I've been calling him Patrick up until now. I don't think I'm going to stop. But if if I asked him or if you ask anybody, hey, uh, can I call you Pat? And they go, no, don't call me Pat. Call me Patrick. Wouldn't you want to know why they don't want to be called Pat? Or you just... You leave that usually alone. I would I usually I would want to know why, but that that one I already know why because I mean my, my mom's name is Pat, you know? So I mean okay. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm right, but you're all right. I why about you? Like I always thought for you, I wondered why, but I guess like you just think it's like lame, Seb. 
No, I was sat down by my father at a young age. I think I was about seven or eight. And he goes, listen, Sebastian's a beautiful name. And if anybody wants to call you Sebi, Sebas, Seb, no. It's your grandfather's name, and that's what I want you to be called. And I'm like, all right. And for some reason, that stuck in the bottom, of my, back of my head. Now, anytime yeah. I have this, can I call you Sebi? No. Well, Sebastian. All right. So, that's so. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. But yeah. I don't want that R. I like, I, I, I do personally like Pete. So I'm being contra contradicting everything. And I always add a Y when I like people. You know, like I'm sure within a week I'll be going, Patty. I just, you know, that's so, <laughs> so what I do. If I like you, I give you the Y. I give you the Y. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like the Y on your name? PD, what is that? I feel like I'm fucking Spock and you're Captain Kirk with that chair. I can't get over it, man. Everything is like seemingly it's the same chair. The the, the picture just looks profound, bro. Anyway, well, I'm interrupting. No, I I'm I'm getting a new I'm getting a new chair. By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a new chair, I think, for the okay. for the Patreon cast. It's a, it's a little bit more dialed down this thing looks like a throne you're right i I, li I literally look like i'm gonna talk to you you're gonna ask me uh godfather could, could you take care <laughs> i'm telling you i feel like you're docking a spaceship uh, back at well, command center <laughs> well you know i don't normally sit this upright because i got the the you know, and normally I'm like this because I got the, the microphone. So this is a whole new vibe I'm trying to get used to. So maybe that's why I look a little bit more authoritative than I generally do, right? Yes, that's it. That's the idea. That's what's going on. But you look, it looks good, man. We'll get used to it. It looks better. All right. So you got uh, any way you want to go in particular? Uh, bro, I got, I got, <sighs> let me just kind of take you through the last couple of days with me. All right. As everybody knows, uh, uh, I've been having problems with my leg for the last year and a couple of months, my right leg, with the uh, with the pain running down. Now, I had an epidural about four, four or five weeks ago, which, uh, you know, five to seven days, it, it added some relief, but now it's back to where it was. Now my knee's hurting for some reason. I think it's because I played basketball two months ago at Orlando. And I was doing jump shots. Apparently, you can't do jump shots at 49. Your knee no, gives up. Man. So I, <laughs> I've been having knee problems. Uh, furthermore, I have a baker's cyst on the back of my knee. Uh, what that basically is, is it's almost like a, you know, I'd say half a tennis ball, but not that big. It's just like a shell, almost like a shell, like a seashell. Uh, type formation on the back of my knee and I think my masseuse might have popped it when she was giving me a, a massage so I don't know what happened but my right knee definitely has uh, been under some stress lately so I go to the knee guy two days ago who's also yeah. a friend friend of my new friend from the school and had us over on Sunday night which I get into that that's a whole other ordeal by the way, a lot of people don't mention. Uh, I was I was I was reading a lot of the chat boards on Patreon, and some of the people were saying that when you go down for a dip, I don't even, I don't even reference it. It's almost what I like, love about you. <laughs> it's just part of the show now. It's just like, it, you know, and people were going, "Why don't you reference that he does that?" I go, well, "You're looking at it. What, what do I got to mention it for?" so beautiful uh yeah i mean that will never be mentioned i just mentioned it for for sake of for the, that's great it's for great the, you know, it's, it is what it is come on it's like uh sipping coffee come on everyone oh by Why? the way speaking of, speaking of pot i gotta tell you something yeah well yeah I, i'm the one who smokes it but you're the one who brings it up more often yeah well, because when I when I do it, it's it's odd. Oh, you oh you did it. Oh, all right. I like these stories. I like these stories. <laughs> well, I took a uh, I took a half a piece of chocolate, laced with some THC. Uh huh. But what I don't know, and I can't find on the product whether or not the pot is the type of pot that puts you to sleep, wakes you up, creative. I know there's different strands. The 
the yeah. sativa or whatever. I, I didn't know what it was, but I'm like, all right, let me let me just pop this. And this was during the day. This is daytime wow. pot, man. Wow. Which is, wow. I'd say about three in the afternoon. I'm like, oh, no, it wasn't. It was 10 a.m. Brushed my Whoa! teeth and I popped it. Oh. Yeah. There are rock stars haven't even smoked pot until 11. <laughs> <laughs> But I wanted to test, and I wanted to see how my mood would be around the family, particularly the kids when they act out or, you know, cry and whatnot. I wanted to see if it put me in a state where I could uh, take that a little bit more at ease, you know? Like, yeah. oh, Caruso's crying. Now, have, have you noticed that your patience level while smoking marijuana is a little bit more laxed or or what's your experience with this that's a tough call i'm pretty i i think i'm a laid kind of laid back around my house anyway so you know maybe that's why i do it but nah i can't i can't say there's any difference i still you know i could smoke and come in and yell you know yeah (laughs) so i was i was trying i was trying to reduce the level of anxiety I get when Caruso won't get in to, uh, you know, whatever, won't eat because mommy's not there, whatever the, whatever the case is. So I popped this thing, right? And I got to tell you, you know, I was a little, you know, I was high. I wasn't tired. I was just, you could feel like in your head, there's a little, something's going on, floating a little bit. And uh, I have to say, it unleashed a little bit of my creativity side that I don't think I tapped into for a while. Wow. Now I don't know if this was—I don't know if this was placebo, just because I'm on pot. All of a sudden, I think I could come up with fun, fun stuff, or did it really have an effect on my brain, where my brain was kind of unlocked, if you will? Right. No. Right. I ain't doing mushrooms or. Right, <laughs> right. You know, and, and Timothy Leary doing LSD, right? <laughs> Trying to write the next Sergeant Pepper's album. Let's not get fucking crazy here, right? <laughs> I'm with you. But I felt it to be uh, a, a good experience. Nothing <clears throat> nothing where I was like, oh, I, I don't want to do this again. I think periodically I'll I'll do that just particularly at night instead of having wine, which I went to go see a nutritionist yesterday. We'll get into that. I mean, we're, there's a lot of shit up on the billboard here right now. All right, all right. Um, but uh, I went to go see the, the knee guy, and uh, he did this thing called PRP. You know what that is? No. So basically, you know, and here's another thing I wanted to ask you. When you go in for a medical procedure... Let's say it was uh, last time I think you went in for something big was your hip, right? Yes. Yeah. So then when you're at the doctor's office and he goes, you're going to need a hip replacement, do you go, oh, okay, um, could you tell me like what you put in me? Do you ask a series of questions or do you go, okay, when, when do you want me to come in? Like, do you get information? Right. Well, he sends me straight to the hip guy. But then when I'm talking to the hip guy, I guess are you asking, do I do I ask him questions? Yeah, like a, is it titanium? Is it this? Is it that? Do you are right. you asking those questions? Well, it's interesting, like because he tells you it's like uh, titanium. I think he said, and he tells you why it's the best. But I don't go. Nah, I've been doing some reading. I I think I want to go with the plastic. You got the plastic? You know, I'm not that guy. I'm like, okay, let's fucking do the titanium. <laughs> you know, I mean, so. I can't, bro. Patrick had to fly up here to set up a camera. You think I'm gonna get going back and forth over what kind of hip rod the doctor should put in me? Um, how about you? Do you do you uh, want to know a lot? I I do, but I think my reasoning is off. You know, we do a PRP, and I've heard of PRP. It's uh, I, I don't even know what the acronym stands for. I think it's blood <coughs> replacement. Patrick, can you look up PRP with, with the... Oh, I love, it. I love it. It's unbelievable. Platelet-rich plasma. What they do is they spin your blood. They take blood out of your arm. They spin it in this uh, machine. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think the white and red blood cells um, 
they leave and what's left is the platelets and they inject that into your knee. Now he's explaining this to me, but he's explaining it to me a lot more sophisticated than I'm explaining it to you. And then he puts it in my knee and what it's supposed to do, and again, I could be wrong on this, but it's supposed to signal the brain to uh, add more blood flow to the area that's that's uh, a problem. Right, right. Again, again, I'm paraphrasing, but. No, I know, I got the I, basics. I asked him, what is that all about? And he told me, but before I even asked him, do you do this? I said to my, I said to myself, I ain't even going to listen to this. Why am I asking him this? And I found out <laughs> I'm asking him because I don't want him to go home to his wife and say, fuck it. So I was with this patient that I told him I was going to do PRP. Didn't even ask what was going on in his body. Like, I don't want to be that guy in his head that he don't, you know? So, you're, you're only asking because you don't want to be embarrassed at his dinner table. You're not even asking because you want to know. You just don't want him to go home and tell his wife that you're an un uninformed goomba, right? <laughs> hey, just pump me up, doc. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> I felt like rock, you know. So it just works. It just works. That's it. So I'll be home petting the turtles tonight, you're saying. This is in and out. This is in and out. <laughs> but this is also similar, I mean, very in a basic way, to the to the uh, vampire facial you had gotten during season three to cast, where they spin the blood, sprinkle it yeah. back on the face to try and get the blood flow going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is just injected into the body. So he's also a shoulder guy, and I've been having shoulder issues for the last three years, right? So we do a series of exercises and movement, and he goes, uh, I think it's your bicep uh, tendon attached to your... Again, he's telling me this. I can't even uh -huh. I can't even regurgitate information people tell me anymore. Right. Now, right. I don't know if the bicep tendon is hooked to the, ch the pectoral or the, or the shoulder. I don't know where it's hooked, but wherever it's hooked... There seems to be a problem. He goes, you want me to do a little PRP there? I said, shit, man. If we keep going, we could PRP the whole body. No, oh, yeah, yeah, come on. This, this sounds like a guy that's got a special vacuum that came in for one room <laughs> and is trying to get you to let him do the basement and everything, you know? I mean, I'm getting worried about this guy now. Oh, I'm a shoulder <laughs> guy, too. And on the way out, is he going to give you a fucking haircut, too? Holy shit. Listen, <laughs> here's the deal. And you got the kind of cash to do this. This is what needs to start to be done with your shoulder and with your knee. You need to call three different top doctors that don't know each other, that don't know they've all been called. They all come to your house. They're all in separate rooms. You have them all come in one room. You're like, each one of you is going to take me to another room. You're going to examine me. You're going to say separate from everybody. Else. Then you're all going to give me a report. And then we're all going to go in one room. And I'm going to go, he said it's the bicep. You said it's the shoulder blade. And you said it's arthritis. What the fuck? is going on here you, you, you know what i'm saying do you want them to discuss between themselves about what their findings were and do you think a doctor who diagnosed it as arthritis would ever change his diagnosis based on hearing what the explanation from another doctor would be yes i think after they all give reports without knowing what each one's thinking you bring them all in and actually exactly what you're saying you go, well, you're saying arthritis, he's saying it's a bicep. And if the arthritis guy does another look and da 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 and says, oh, you know what? I see, yeah, he's right, it is a bicep. And then I'll go, okay, you're fired from the medical field. <laughs> I, you're fired from the medical field. You were gonna give me arthritis pills and I got a bicep problem. I don't understand. It's like our own, I hate to get political, Secretary of Treasury. It's, uh, sorry, I was wrong. There is inflation. Anyway, this is what you should do now. Do now? This is what you should do now, lady. Start the car and get out of the office. You're done. Holy shit. Second chance. Anybody to <laughs> get fired over there? No. What? What is with second chances? You don't get second chances, man. It's a tightrope. Life is a tightrope, baby. Well, the president the other day, I sent you the video, said he had cancer. Oh, bro, and, you're, ador and, you're adorable saying we have a president. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so cute. We got, we're got flying solo. It woke me up in the middle of the night. I swear to God, I rolled over in the middle of the night last night. I'm like, we literally have no president right now. We got, I mean, 
By the way, the only good news out of this is if you're not invading us now, <laughs> I mean, if you, if, when are you coming? I mean, I hate to say it, but if you ain't coming now, holy shit, we're down on one knee, panting with no water. Start the tanks if you're coming. <laughs> I know, the door is wide open, right? Jeez. Oh, okay. I mean, in every possible way, you know? So, anyway, uh, I saw the yes. video you sent me. The first frost, you know what was happening. You had to put on your windshield wipers to get literally the oil slick off the window. That's why I and so damn many other people I grew up have cancer. Okay, so you saw in the video that he says, you know, like, he's got cancer and... It, now, I don't know if this was a press conference or what, but the, after he's done, doesn't someone raise their hand and go, did, did you just say you have cancer? <laughs> like, where's the... And then it just was left alone. Like, it was just done. Like, I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah. The President of the United States, States says he's got cancer. Don't we think, like, he comes back out and goes, I don't know what the fuck I was saying, but I don't. Or... Or I do, I do, I got it. I, I don't know. The press corps and like the, the the person that speaks for him, the spokesman for the White House, it's like, I'm sorry. It's exactly like when you have a grandfather that's old and rude because he can be and he, and he doesn't really have all of his whereabouts. So he'll, he'll be like, oh, you know, grab my finger and watch your fart. You know, it's like just the nut. And then he leaves and then the family goes, I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry. It's just, you know. That's where we're at. Yeah. He, he says whatever he wants, and then he just leaves. I had cancer. There was raining oil. What? What? <laughs> That's uh, why everyone from I, Delaware has cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I have a grandfather who's no longer with us who had Alzheimer's disease, right? right. Now, unfortunately, one one night, you know, he was li he was living it alone. And uh, we got a call from Chase Bank. It's about seven o'clock at night. And my grandfather was found at Chase Bank. He had driven to Chase Bank and he was banging on Chase Bank's door because he thought it was his house. Right? Oh. Af yeah. after, after that night, we sold his house, his car. And he moved in with us. Right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not laughing, but I love the Italian. No. We're stepping up. This is what's getting done. This is never That's happens. They've been never going to be a man of Scalco knocking on a Chase Bank <laughs> trying to get in the, to the kitchen. All right. <laughs> so, so as a family, we just took action within 24 hours. The guy was living with us. Beautiful. Biden's been in office for almost two years. No one's taking a, the keys away. I know. I look at this guy and what I he should be the life of the party in the lobby of the assisted living home. You know what I'm saying? Like every time he comes down the stairs, everyone knows bingo is going to be fun this morning. But it's it's not even a joke anymore, bro. It's like dangerous, you know? Yeah. And no, you, it's, you, it's you, lethal. You almost want to look over at the vice president and go how little do they believe in you? <laughs> I mean, what are they gonna let's let this woman step up, baby? You know, see what she's got. She's this close know, right? to being the most famous woman that ever lived in America. This close, it's right there. <laughs> oh, anyway. god. Oh. So, so like, he gives me the shots of the PRP. In yeah. the knee and the shoulder. Takes four to six weeks to kick in, right? Again, I don't know why. I just I would just think this stuff happens automatically, right? You put it in. It, why you put Novocaine in your mouth and during a, a, a tooth surgery it works right away? You put blood in the, in the thing. Uh, why isn't that happening? I know. I'm, I'm right there with you, you know? I mean, by the... But who knows if I wouldn't just be feeling better by then anyway, it's so far from now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you're giving yourself a free window. I could two years from now go, God, niece, I don't know. It feels great. That, 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 it kicked in, guy. It finally kicked in. <laughs> so four uh, to six weeks we wait, right? Four to six weeks, I got that. Yesterday I went in for another epidural in the back. 
They said sometimes you need two. So this is my last one. If it's not working after this, I'm going to have to look at other options. But I got so much shit running through my body right now. Yeah, yeah. That uh, <laughs> something's got to something's gotta happen, man. I got my own blood in my, in my shoulder, my knee. I got steroid in my spine. <clears throat> the 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 way the way I'm going, right? You would think that that I I was, you know, a rate uh, uh, like a stunt like a stunt man working right. in Hollywood, and at 49, my body's giving out. <clears throat> the only strenuous activity, I I got a guy in the back. I got a guy in the backyard right now breaking concrete with a with a jackhammer. Yeah, I don't I, hear it. Yeah, because we're in a, oh. uh, we're, oh, we're, a we're in a, you don't hear nothing, bro. I hear it a little. By the way, I just want to point out, I know what you're trying to get at with, you know, the way that yeah, all the stuff to keep you going. But really, when you think about it, you know, they were trying to, you know, they, Elvis was doing pills and stuff to keep playing. Sh the only difference between you and Elvis is the act. <laughs> you you play in the same size venues. There is a lot of people and a lot of things at stake. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people hoping you keep pumping your own spinned blood into your body for many, <laughs> for, for many years to come, bro. <laughs> and by the way, again, this is one of these things. You're at that level. If this is a real thing, how come you already just weren't getting this done? You know, once every four to six weeks, they spin all my blood. Uh, we even get it. We even bring it ahead of time so they can spin it ahead of time. And then they just do my arms, my elbows, like you're saying, like like the, the ultimate maintaining, you know what I'm saying? What's Stallone doing? <laughs> That's what I want to know, right? What is Stallone doing? What is Schwarzenegger doing? <laughs> they'll be well, like, you know what? They'll be like, we've been, I've been spending my blood for years. I do it every Wednesday. <laughs> By the way, where's this ranking in the Whitney Cummings podcast? Are you having more fun? Or... <laughs> Guy's having a heart attack. He hasn't left this hard since uh, he came to my house the other night. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you get done last night? Oh, you got another steroid put in. All right. And you I got, got the, the epi I got, yeah, so I got the steroid. I got the blood. And then I went to go see a nutritionist yesterday. Lana and I decided, you know, ain't re ain't eating the right foods and i could tell because at 2 p.m i'm starting to plateau like i need a nap i'm right. foggy headed right. and yeah that could be due to like you know drinking wine at night and whatnot older age i get it but i feel like i'm not eating the right foods for my body mm -hmm. so we went into this guy highly recommended and uh he uh I don't know if you deal with this because your name is not so Italian. It's Italian, but it's like not like ah uh, or o oh, or or I. You know those. You know, yeah. It's not like it's not like Giannini or you know what not. You know, it's. Do you ever feel like your name is not as Italian as you are Italian? No, because my name is closer to uh, Corleone than most of you guys, but. Um, yeah, I do. It's not like a Migliori, a Santarelli, a, you know, I, yeah, I do yeah. get that. And then, you know, you had the Peter on front. You're like, what is this guy? I don't even know what the fuck this guy is. <laughs> so I hear, yeah, like I hear Maniscalco and I'm like, you know, these guys, the, 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 the women don't even shave their armpits in this family. <laughs> <laughs> So he's like, man, Sebastian. He comes to the waiting room. Sebastian Mascalco. I said, yeah. And then Lana, Man yeah. So we come in. And he's like, Sebastian Mascalco. What are you part of the mob? You know? Yeah. And you know what? I, I I get this every once in a while where the guy associates Italian with the mafia. I get it. I yeah. get it. It's glamorized in movies and this that and the other thing. But let's build up to that. We don't like right from the right from the get go. We're going into the. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> There's so much more to us. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's like, uh, you ever get the, oh, hey, Maniscalco, hey, oh, you know, like, <laughs> don't whack me. Well, when I hear that, 
I lose kind of my normal voice and I go into this businessman voice that I got. Oh that, yeah. That 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 it's like you're thinking I didn't finish high school, right? Mm. But I'm going to tell you I graduated Harvard voice. That type. Uh, yeah, out of character. I dig it. I mean, yeah, not what yeah, you expect. Yeah. No. No, I don't buy into it. So anyway, we sit down. This guy's a guru, bro. This guy could say I'm I'm, I'm part of the he head of the Gambino crime family next time I come in. I don't really? give a shit. That's how good oh, this guy is. Wow, wow, wow. Why? Why? It's just food. What are we talking about here? Pricks the finger, gets a blood sample, analyzes your you know, your cholesterol, your uh your metabolism, the whole thing. And pinpoints based on the information and the information I tell him, uh, what you should be eating, when you should be eating it. So a lot of this is like eating the right things at the right time during the day. Obviously, I'm not eating like fast foods or whatnot, but I like to right. snack a lot. Yeah. The snacking is on, you know, beef jerky or cashews or, you know, these little gluten-free pretzels. I'm not eating enough at the meal. I should be uh -huh. eating more. He goes, you should be eating more. You're actually under eating. Wow. Uh, he says that you, you need to eat to feed your metabolism. It, uh, the metabolism runs off food. So I guess if you're starving, your metabolism, and he said it's not yeah. high or low, it's hot or cold. So yeah. I got about a 51% um, metabolism, which is, I'm basically in the coffin. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm freezing. Right. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna speed it. So anyway, it's it's all about accountability. Wow. We're gonna go back in, back in in fourteen days. He's gonna like reweigh us, body fat again. We gotta follow this thing like it's uh, like it's the Bible. So we started that today. Today, and I gotta tell you again, I don't know if this is just because I mean I I just switched my breakfast and my snack. Right. But. Uh, or I don't know if it's the steroid flowing through my body, but I feel well, I feel like running a. I feel like grabbing that jackhammer outside. <laughs> it could be the blood working earlier than expected. It could be a lot going on. <laughs> but um, listen, I, I you know I like hearing this nutritionist because I think living out there and you've been out there so long and busting it trying to get where you got to get to. It's time to start embracing the California lifestyle as much as Lana does. I think. Let's get a yoga person over three times a week and do it out on the lawn. Let's go with let's go with vegetables um, in a blender. You know, again, once you get everything lined up and the metabolism is where it should be, the diet should be Matthew McConaughey's diet. The pills you take and the me medical procedures should be Stallone's medical procedures. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to steal from the best, bro. That's what you got to do. Brad That's Pitt, funny. I don't know. He's just jeans. That's just jeans, man. No, uh, jeans and Tom. I, I like to think that Tom Cruise is jeans, but I, I think he's got to be on some type of young serum. Oh yeah, they got it. They got a special tube in the headquarters Scientology. He just stands in that, and a mist comes out. Comes out, <laughs> just keeps him at the same age forever, bro. I'm telling you, he's their pope. He's he is literally the pope of fucking Scientology. Oh, I know. I did, yeah. yeah, bro, he's so good with the Scientology stuff. I mean, what a salesman. So you guys put a poster of him up on the wall and go, you want to look like that at 60? Boy. <laughs> you know how many people would become Catholic if the Pope was in the next Top Gun? <laughs> I mean, come on. That would be unbelievable. That's what that's what their religion is. Their God, their leader is, is Tommy C. So, um, hey, listen, I hope the nutritionist works. Here we go, though. What do we got for? You can still snack, but these are the snacks you should have and the times you should have them. I mean, it's always the same old thing. Fruit, bro. fruit, fruit. It's a snack is fruit, basically. It's, it's, and, and no eating uh, any carbohydrates for dinner, like uh, steak and veg. Carbohydrates you eat during earlier in the day. It's, it's it's as simple as castaway. When Tom Hanks got to the island, he was fat and he had a bad tooth. He knocked the tooth out, ate fish and fruit the rest of his time there. He came back. He was so thin. His wife was so upset that she found another man. He looked fantastic. Remember that? Fish <laughs> yeah. and fruit, man.
talked to a volleyball for four years and ate fucking fish and fruit. Boom. So, but I hope you embrace it. You're, 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 ah, you're Italian though. You like your thick pasta. You like your, it's maybe, you, right, you know, yeah. One night a week, you get a cheat meal and that cheat meal could be whatever. And the way he described it, he goes, go uptown for your cheat meal. Like, what, what, what do you mean by that? He goes, listen, it's better to go uptown than downtown for the cheat meal. Basically saying it's better to go to like a, a nice restaurant and get and get pasta or pizza or whatnot than to go to like in and out or Carl's. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. You're still cheating either way, but the good good restaurants are better cheat. Yeah, absolutely. All did right. Lana's blood work? Did Lana's blood work? One more thing on this. Did Lana's blood yeah. work? And uh, she's got levels that like uh, professional athletes don't even have. She, the, right. the guy looked at her paperwork and said, "I uh, wow, wow, wow man, I I've never seen this before." <sighs> so I started thinking, should she be an athlete? I, I mean, she she practically is with the way she's built and and everything she's doing. I mean. She's going to live so much longer than you. It's a toss-up that she even chooses you over the next guy to get buried next to when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> By the time Lana dies, she won't even remember my name. She'll be like, oh, my first husband. What was the guy she used to do podcasts with? Oh, my God, that was 2022. Oh, man. Uh, she'll be saying that, having a conversation on a spaceship on the way to Mars for vacation. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> She's gonna live a long time. Yeah, that's why yeah. you got to do this plasma stuff. You know, I'm kidding. That's with it. You don't get upset about no. it. I'm kidding. I'm well, kidding. I'm upset. I'm not upset. Uh, We're not upset. Have uh, ever got upset? Come on. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Tell me what's going on over there. A lot of cast people have been sending this photo. I don't know if you've seen it of Brad Pitt in a skirt at the premiere of his new movie. I'm looking at the photo right now, and it, I'm sorry, Patrick. The heat wave. So he said it was the heat wave. I don't know. It was, apparently it was hot there, and this is what he put on. I got to tell uh, you, though. Yeah. I got to yeah. tell you something. What? He pulls it off. I, I, I can't believe you're saying that, bro. If it was any other man, I'd say this, this looks ridiculous. But I tell you what does it for me here, which, which shows masculinity. This guy's got a calf on him. <laughs> with, a vein, <laughs> with a vein running through it, right? Yeah. Now, if it wasn't for that calf, I don't think that this outfit flies. But, yeah, it says feminine, but that calf just negates the skirt, bro. All right. Uh, no, nothing <laughs> negates the skirt. I am sorry to say. I mean, he could win a calf contest. I'm still seeing that skirt. And I don't know if there's a bit of a statement behind that in the sense that it's hot because of global warming. So, you oh, know, is let, that let, what that is? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I just, no. Yeah, no, I, 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 I just think in terms of the Andy Garcia's, the Pesci's, these guys. That's that's maybe a nice pair of loafers and shorts, if that. But no, it's gonna be a suit every time. And here's the bigger thing, bro. I'm Brad Pitt's publicist. I know this matters to BP. Tom Cruise puts out Top Gun, lands in a helicopter in a suit for his own premiere. Don't you think it's time to try and like? I, I need to come out in my best suit, shades, hair just right. You you you, you retaliate in a skirt. I'm not saying that this is a, a look right. that I would wear or he should wear again. All right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm with you. You come out in your Sunday's best. I don't give a shit if it's 113 degrees. You put right. the suit on, the tie, the whole thing. You sweat that's right it. through it. That's it, bro. That's it. And that's that. Right. But, uh, and, and if it's for other reasons, global warming or promoting whatever the hell you're promoting, I, I ain't into that. I'm just saying. <laughs> this guy's this guy's calf at 50 looks like mine at 21. What's he on? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not a calf. I'm not into big calves. I'm not into. I I I just 
nah, I don't know. Anyway, you think um, we'll be having some guests when your studio is done? Some in studio yeah. guests? Have you any I, thought on that? Yeah, I think we're gonna have guests. Uh, not a lot, but I think guests are definitely a possibility. But people that we want to like talk to, um, and we'll bring them in. I mean, we could bring them in on the, via Zoom, or we could bring them in. I was actually talking to Patrick about bringing a Patreon listener on on Zoom and having like a question answer day where we just zoom with cast people so that like that's going to that. be a possibility here so a lot of things that we're going to be able to do that we haven't done before which which is exciting um just want to thank everybody at the pete and sebastian show for continuing to listen and and, and view and share really appreciate it i know we're going through a little transition here but this is for definitely the 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 betterment of your listening and viewing pleasure. Oh. So thanks once again, and we will see you guys next week.